To avoid spoilers, let's just say that Devin and Abby share a passionate kiss just as Spoiler shows up and Tucker plans his next move. Summer and Kyle, concerned about Harrison's high temperature, show up at the Abbott residence. Diane reports that the pediatrician is currently with the child. The two of them have decided to take a stroll up the stairs. Connected narrative. Curve ball on the young and the restless. Sally's decision could surprise everyone, including herself. Plus, Courtney hopes hottest photo shoots. At the society event, Lauren asks Michael sarcastically if he's ever considered changing his mind about backing Diane. More information is required for him. Lauren insists she did not lie and that the circumstances do not alter the facts. In Michael's opinion, ambiguities exist. Simply put, he doesn't see why Lauren should back the lady up. Later, Phyllis says, neither do I. Lauren is perplexed as to what excuse might clear Diane of working together with Tucker. Michael says the context is that she admitted it. Lauren and Phyllis have seen a trend in her behavior and wondered how much more obvious it could be. As soon as Michael receives a text, he leaves. Phyllis is moaning to Lauren about how their lives have been ruined by the return of two troublemakers. Divin, in his penthouse, takes a look at a picture of himself and Neil, recalling how his father encouraged him to pursue a career in music. He reflects on the fact that Neil has been there for him since day one and recalls a different time. Separate time, he texted. All night long, her mind kept racing with the worst-case scenario. Can this really be the way her marriage ends? Abby's marriage is secure, according to Devon's words of comfort. Abby says she tossed and turned all night thinking about what he had said. She starts to doubt if he's right and if he's really providing for her in every way. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but maybe we aren't that compatible. Calmly, Devon says, I don't know about that. He probes for details about what she needs from her husband but isn't getting. There's a barrier between them and they both know it, but she can't put it into words. Tucker answers the door to Audra, who questions his departure from the GCAC and invites her into his suite at the Grand Phoenix. Tucker claims that Devon has sold the Grand Phoenix to Chancellor. He wants to know the company's status and how long they'll have to wait before taking action. When Nikki tells Victor about her meeting with Ashley and Phyllis, Victor remarks on their unholy alliance and questions Nikki about it at the ranch. Nikki claims the only reason is their mutual loathing of Diane. Tucker's relationship with Diane in Los Angeles and his fixation on Ashley become topics of conversation. As Nikki puts it, he'll be using that to figure out what drives him. Victor has enough of a relationship with him to know that he's wants more than just money. When Jack returns to the Abbott home, Summer and Kyle tell him that Harrison must be taken to the hospital for testing, since he may have become sick while they were away. As Kyle brings Harrison into the kitchen, Diane tries to explain herself to Summer, but she says this isn't the right time or place. Jack agrees and tells Diane they'll keep her informed about Harrison. Just as she is about to depart, Kyle and Harrison return. Michael claims that although Tucker is skilled at covering his traces, he has nonetheless been able to link Tucker to Audra Charles. Victor is aware that she is Jill's new hiring at Chancellor Winters to manage the IPO. Michael claims that his mate thinks of the two of them purely in a business capacity. Nothing is ever so coincidental, so Victor dismisses it as crap. Tucker McCall, it seems, is plotting something. Michael speculates that Victor believes Audra has been placed there because of Michael's plans to make a transfer within the corporation. The next day at the Abbott residence, Kyle and Diane talk about Harrison's exhaustion after his hospital stay and the impending arrival of test results. Kyle is concerned that it could be a serious health issue. He feels better after hearing Diane's words of comfort. At the age of 12, Nikki complains about Diane and Tucker at the ranch. Victor recommends that she drop the matter and trust in him and his group to handle it. Nikki says she can't, and she's frustrated that Jack is trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. If Abbott's involvement with Jenkins has any impact on Summer or Harrison, though Victor will intervene. Meanwhile, he plans to investigate Tucker's activities. Abby, who lives in the penthouse, doesn't think it's a big deal that Devin still thinks about the good times he had with Neil. The two had a strong emotional bond, never underestimating the power of keeping his memory alive. To the extent that Brad shaped her into the woman she is today, Neil shaped him into the guy he is today. 
Devin feels grateful to her for her insight and for stating that to him. Abby grabs his hand tightly. When Dom wakes up, Devin expresses his appreciation for having them visit, saying that his mother has been a rock for the two of them through the years. Abby reflects that much like Dom, her own father has been supportive throughout her life. Abby and Devin exchange friendly smiles. Devin never pictured himself forming a family in this way, but he now considers it one of his greatest blessings. Lauren advises Phyllis to envision herself in Diane's shoes with one of her children at society and tells her to stop fighting. Phyllis wants to know what's going on. Lauren maintains that she must quit doing this for the sake of her own mental health. Nikki welcomes Michael to the property, but then she leaves him alone with Victor to have their conversation. The question comes from Victor, who wants to know the results of his investigation. Although Audra lemons to Tucker in his suite that the IPO has been put on hold because of Nate's confession, the good news is that Jill appears committed to moving forward with it. Tucker believes there is still a chance for them to succeed. Her curiosity in his thoughts prompts her to probe. Tucker beams with happiness. It could be time to pit sibling against sibling. When Abby arrives at Devon's, she begins to suspect that she and Chance do not share the same desires. Work and family are equal in his eyes, but she desires more. Devon thinks that she has no reason to apologize for that. No one is at fault in his eyes. Everyone just has a unique perspective. He will accuse Chance of being selfish for not prioritizing his relationship with her and Dominic. I would go to any lengths for the two of you. Abby and Devon embrace passionately. Kyle was hospitalized with Mono. He hopes his son would never have to experience anything terrifying like that. Diane is truly sorry that she was unable to be there for him at that time. Victor, back at the ranch, speculates that Tucker wishes to assume control of Chancellor Winters and that, if he is astute, he will do so in tandem with Devon. In exchange for information about Ashley, he is aware of the agreement he made with Diane. As far as Michael is concerned, it doesn't seem dangerous. Victor tells him that nothing Tucker does is completely harmless. It's suspected that he's planning something. Dom is sleeping soundly in Devon's penthouse, so he inquires as to what is bothering Abby. She aspires to have even a fraction of Devon's insight into her husband's emotions. They've overcome external obstacles, but their conflict now lies within. He was absent from the house last night. He left after a devastating argument about the future of their marriage. Separate time, he texted. All night long, her mind kept racing with the worst-case scenario. Can this really be the way her marriage ends? Abby's marriage is secure, according to Devon's words of comfort. Abby says she tossed and turned all night thinking about what he had said. She starts to doubt if he's right and if he's really providing for her in every way. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but maybe we aren't that compatible. Calmly, Devon says, I don't know about that. He probes for details about what she needs from her husband but isn't getting. There's a barrier between them and they both know it, but she can't put it into words. Tucker answers the door to Audra, who questions his departure from the GCAC and invites her into his suite at the Grand Phoenix. Tucker claims that Devon has sold the Grand Phoenix to Chancellor. He wants to know the company's status and how long they'll have to wait before taking action. At the Abbott estate, Kyle vents about how his mother's actions in Los Angeles caught him by surprise. Now that he gives it some more thought, he sees that Jeremy and Tucker trapped her. All she wanted was to return to them. When he overheard Harrison yell for his DD, it all became real to him. I don't want to separate you two. Whatever she did in Los Angeles, he's willing to forgive her because it brought her back to him and Harrison. Dia sighs and lets out a deep breath. Incredibly, she is thankful. Her concern is that Summer won't be persuaded. Kyle will convince her of his position since he cannot bear to lose his mother a second time. This better be everything, he threatens, because if there's anything else she's hiding, he'll never forgive her. They lock arms. Although Audra lemons to Tucker in his suite that the IPO has been put on hold because of Nate's confession, the good news is that Jill appears committed to moving forward with it. Tucker believes there is still a chance for them to succeed. Her curiosity in his thoughts prompts her to probe. Tucker beams with happiness. It could be time to pit sibling against sibling. When Abby arrives at Devon's, she begins to suspect that she and Chance do not share the same desires. Work and family are equal in his eyes, but she desires more. Devon thinks that she has no reason to apologize for that. No one is at fault in his eyes. 
everyone just has a unique perspective. He will accuse Chance of being selfish for not prioritizing his relationship with her and Dominic. I would go to any lengths for the two of you. Abby and Devon embrace passionately.